Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about coding for cybersecurity. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start this session by understanding why we need cybersecurity and what exactly it is. Then we shall discuss different types of programming languages to consider when we deal with cybersecurity. Moving ahead, I'll be speaking about various projects to work on. Finally, I'll end this session by implementing a cryptographic system. So let's now start off by understanding why and what is cybersecurity. You see, we live in a digital era that understands that our private information is more vulnerable than ever. What I'm trying to say here is we all live in a world that is networked together from internet banking to government infrastructure, where data is stored on computer and other devices. A portion of that data can be sensitive information, which when authorized access could have a negative consequences. So why do we need cybersecurity? I'm sure you guys by now have a wild guess why we need cybersecurity. With lots of online activities, cyber attacks are on the rise. The cyber attack is now an international concern. Organizations transmit sensitive data across the networks and other devices while doing their business activities. And cybersecurity ensures protecting that information and systems. So finally, coming down to what is cybersecurity? Well, cybersecurity is a set of principles and practices designed to protect our computing resources and online information against threats. What I'm trying to say here is, due to heavy dependency on computer in modern industry that stores and transmits an abundant amount of confidential and essential information, cybersecurity has become a critical part of a digital function. Now that we know why and what is cybersecurity, let's see a few of the top programming languages to consider while learning cybersecurity. Starting off with C and C++. We all know C is one of the oldest programming language out there and was developed in early 90s. It was mainly used to develop software like operating systems, database, compilers and many more. It is an excellent language to learn for programming for beginners. Moreover, after learning C, it must be very easy to learn programming language like Java and Python. Speaking about C++, it is a general purpose programming language which is actually an extension of C programming. And the main use of C++ is to develop operating systems, browsers, games and many more. So why should I use C and C++ for cybersecurity? Well, you see, both are low level programming language that you need to know as a cybersecurity professional. This is because these languages have low level access to hardware such as RAM and system processing, which are easily exploited by hackers if not protected. So why are C and C++ useful in cybersecurity? C and C++ are useful for reverse engineering and finding the vulnerabilities. And on top of that, a lot of malware is written in C++. This learning C++ is more important for reading and understanding open source code. Many cybersecurity programs such as Nmap, the network mapper tool, are created using C++. Next we have Python. We all know Python is a general purpose, object oriented, high level programming language and is one of the most popular and widely used coding language due to its versatility. It includes high level data structures, dynamic binding, dynamic typing and other features making it ideal programming language for complex application development. Python is suitable for general purpose tasks like data managing and big data facilities. It is a high level scripting language that is easier to learn than other low level languages. Python is a useful programming language for cybersecurity professionals because we can perform a variety of cybersecurity functions like Marvel analysis, penetration testing and scanning. Apart from that, Python enables cybersecurity managers who lead the team to implement projects quickly. As Python has extensive set of libraries, which means that cybersecurity tools are already available. And finally, we all know Python can be used for accomplishing multiple tasks such as host discovery, accessing servers, port scanning and network scanning. This helps cybersecurity professionals to keep up with the task. Moving ahead, we have JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the most popular and widespread programming language. It is one of the top rated programming language for web development. Moreover, the growth of frameworks such as jQuery, Angular and ReactJS has made JavaScript even more powerful. It helps programmers to build front end as well as back end software using different JavaScript based framework like jQuery and Node.js. However, JavaScript comes with variety of frameworks and libraries and its usage has now extended to mobile application development, desktop app development and game development. It is one of the best cybersecurity programming language you can learn. If you are proficient in JavaScript, you can make sure that website is secure enough to reduce or even eliminate web-based attack. What I'm trying to say here is that 
JavaScript enables you to design secure websites and user interface. This is achieved by mitigating possible cross-site scripting attempts in web forms and minimizing other technical risks. JavaScript also allows you to work with cookies, manipulating event handlers, and even perform cross-site scripting. Next in our plate, we have PHP. PHP is a server-side programming language that is used to develop websites. PHP powers 80% of the top 10 million websites, thus making it most dominant server-side language on web. Thus, knowledge of PHP will enable you to know how to defend against intruders. One of the most common hacking techniques using PHP is DOS, which stands for Denial of Service Attack. Such attacks usually attempt to make web applications unavailable to user by shutting down the websites. How can you make use of PHP to delete all the data on your website if you are not careful about how you built it? This learning PHP programming language can help you identify and solve vulnerabilities in the PHP code. Moving ahead, we have SQL. SQL is a domain-specific language used in programming. It manages the data stored in database. With organizations getting more data-driven, SQL is most sought-out programming language for managing databases. You see, SQL enables you to access records or data with just one single command. Thus, by using SQL queries, the user will not have to specify the data that should be retrieved. Nowadays, most hackers try to exploit database with the intention of stealing or modifying it. Whenever you attempt to log into a website, a password stored in the database is bought up and compared with what you have typed. While you cannot see it, hackers take advantage of this by using SQL injection to extract sensitive data from organization and individuals. It can result in loss of critical information such as password, bank account information, social security numbers, and many more. Therefore, learning SQL can help you make database more secure. I'm sure you might be wondering how, right? Well, an understanding of SQL, its users, and how SQL injection attacks enables you to manipulate website can be beneficial to security professionals. Since SQL injection is one of the top threats to web application security, security defenders will generally be helpful by mastery of SQL. To wrap things up, some researchers claim that there is one language that is more or less secure than other. The truth is that there is no one best programming language. It all depends upon what you are trying to achieve with it. Any programming language can be ideal as long as you create a perfect cybersecurity strategy. Now let's move ahead and see some of the projects to work with for getting hands-on experience on cybersecurity concepts and principles. Start by working on Keylogger. You see Keylogger, which is a shorthand term version of Keystroke Logger. So what this software does is it has the ability to record every keystroke made by anyone on that system. This would be useful by hackers to get private information like net banking credentials, account user ID and password and many more. This concept of cybersecurity could be a great topic to do a project on. You see, if you are a programmer or someone who is good at coding, you can develop your own keylogger and capture keystroke on your system. Another project could be developing a keylogger or find a way for a keylogger to capture stroke on a virtual keyboard as well. Keyloggers over the years have become more sophisticated. This is making it hard for AVs to detect them. So as a project, you can do a research on different ways to spot and detect keylogger from a system by reverse engineering it. Next on our list, we have break a Caesar cipher. If you don't know what Caesar cipher is, it is a type of encryption method that was first used by Julius Caesar to communicate with his officials. This encryption technique is also considered to be one of the first method which is still ineffective. The concept of Caesar cipher is pretty simple. A letter of a given text is replaced by another letter that comes after a number of other alphabets. As a project, using a logic behind Caesar cipher, you can build a small web app that can break Caesar ciphers. This would be a great project as a beginner, as someone who is just getting started with cybersecurity. This kind of project would give you confidence to make up to a bigger and more advanced project. Moving ahead to our next project, that is packet sniffing. Packet sniffing is one of the most important concepts of cybersecurity. When you are in a get to go of your cybersecurity journey and want to do a project around the concept you learn, packet sniffing can be a great choice. You see, if you are learning cybersecurity in a training center, they would definitely allow you to perform this task as your project. But if you are using network of an organization and institute, then it is advised to take a prior permission of the administrator. Packet sniffing, which is also known as network traffic analysis, is all about taking a look at data packets that are sent across the internet and moves on your network. There are several tools available that captures packets such as TCP dump, wind dump, and many more.
Finally, on our next project, we have SQL vulnerability assessment. SQL injection is one of the most initial and important topics in cybersecurity. Over the years, many websites have been hacked using SQL injection. As mentioned earlier, it is a type of injection attacks that is possible for hackers to execute malicious SQL statement. Therefore, project on this concept would add significant value to your portfolio. Now moving ahead in our session, let's see how we can encrypt and decrypt our message using cryptography. Before we do that, let's see what is cryptography. Well, cryptography is associated with the process of converting ordinary plain text into encoded text. It is a method of storing and transmitting data in a particular form so that only those who are authorized to see it can proceed with it. Cryptography not only protects data from thefts and alteration, but also it can be used as an authentication. Before we move on and build our cryptography system, let me give you a brief overlook. So to give you a better understanding of what is cryptography, right? So let's go something like we have two people over here. Let's say A and B. Now A and B are trying to have a conversation. Sometimes what happens is when we are on a web, there'll be a third party as an intruder over here. When A and B are trying to connect, we obviously have an intruder. We have this kind of intruders only when we are trying to have a conversation over unsecured network. Okay. So now what happens is you, these people have access to public Wi-Fi and there is an intruder over here. So whatever conversation that these people are having, right? It's going through them. Okay. It's going through this intruder over here. So now what these guys do is they know that they are in a public network. So they come up with a solution. Okay. So if A is trying to send a message something like hello, he will try to encrypt this. Okay. He'll try to encrypt this. Say something like hello will be converted into O L L E H. And he'll send this as a package to B. And now, as A knows B, right? So he will inform to B as he receives this package, which would be O L L E H. He will tell whatever message you're receiving from my end, try to just reverse it. So now B gets the actual message, right? But now what happens with I, who's our intruder over here? Intruder will get the message O L L E H. But now intruder is stunned. He doesn't know what this information means. And as I'm not providing any kind of clue or key, so intruder will not have any access or any information to get out of this. So now what we're going to do is we're trying to create a system where there would be two servers. So we'll be using Python network programming, although it's not necessary for you to know Python network programming to generate a cipher text. Okay. So this is just to give you the feel of sending a message from one server to the other. And what we'll do is we'll also have another intruder over here. Okay. This person over here, this server A over here, it'll encode the message and send the encoded message to both intruder as well as our server B. Okay. Now at server B, what will happen is he will get the message, okay, which is encoded message. And he won't have any access to this information. Whereas for B, we'll be providing a key over here and using the key, he will try to decipher the text. All right. So let us now quickly move to my code editor and see how we can implement this. So as you can see, I have come here to my ID that's I'm using PyCharm here and I've already created three files. So server one, hacker one and client one. So server one here refers to the A part. A hacker is nothing but the intruder and client one is going to be our receiver end, right? So what we're going to do initially is we are going to have the server one. Okay. Before we move ahead, right? I'll just give you an example of what we're going to do. So we'll have like message here. So you're supposed to pass in your message. So we'll give here input. Okay. And we'll give a small message something like please enter your message. Okay. So now what we're going to do is whatever message we get, it will be stored here in MSG, right? So now we're supposed to design our own encryption algorithm. So what are you going to do for that? We'll give something like ENC. But before that, what we'll do is let me just give an example what we are going to do. So let's take like four alphabets. Okay. So we have A, B, C, and D, right? So now our encryption algorithm would be something like wherever we have A, right? It would become D. If you have B, it would be C. If you have C, it's going to be B. And if you have D, it's going to be A. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is if this is a string, okay, our encryption algorithm would be the reverse of that. Okay. So our encrypted message would have the reverse of that equivalent values. So we'll define our key here. So key is going to be it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. 
and we'll also have to mention some numbers, right? So it would be from 0 to 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we'll give a space with an exclamatory mark. Okay, this is just to increase the complexity of our code. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll create a dictionary. Okay, okay, so now we're going to create a dictionary, right? So we'll have something like encrypted message. So E underscore MSG, right? So let this be an encrypted message. This would be equal to dictionary. Okay. So here what we're going to pass is this thing, right? So like in place, if it's a, it's going to be replaced by exclamatory mark. So what we're going to do is we'll obviously have to reverse it. So we'll have val, which would be nothing but reverse of this. So how do I put a reverse of that? It's going to buy string slicing. So key and minus one. So this would give us the reverse value of this key. Now what I'm trying to achieve here is whenever I have alphabet A, it has to be replaced by exclamatory mark. Whenever it is B, it will be a space. So now what we'll do is we'll have a dictionary, then we'll have a zip. Because we are creating a dictionary, right? Key value pair, and then we'll give key and then value. Sounds good, right? Okay, so what we have done over here is we have created our dictionary. So let me quickly print this dictionary and show you how it would look like. So print. Okay, so let me quickly run this here. So we'll enter our message. Okay, but we have not getting the encrypted message, but we have something printed here, right? So what this is telling is this is nothing but the dictionary. So here A will be replaced by exclamatory mark. B over here would be replaced by space and C by nine. So now let's encrypt our message. I'm pretty sure this sounds pretty interesting. So to encrypt our message, we'll have encrypted message ENC message. This would be nothing but dot join. Okay, so this is because we'll be just doing the list comprehension, right? So it will be join and now what we'll do is we'll take this dictionary here E underscore message and then we are going to pass letters or words you can say. Now where am I going to get these words from? So it's going to be from a for loop for words in our message, right? So it's going to be this. Okay, so after performing this, right, we'll have our encrypted message. So if you don't believe me, let me quickly walk you through this. So let me print this print encrypted message ENC underscore message and let me comment this out. We don't want to print our encryption key over here. So let me quickly run this. Let's give a message something like hi. It's a beautiful day. So anyone can read this out right now. Let's see what happens if I encrypt this. Okay, so as you can see here, we are getting an error right so the reason why we are getting an error is because we have an uppercase and we haven't defined any uppercase values here so in order to fix this all we need to do is use dot lower okay so over here we have message dot lower okay so let me quickly run this again so let me give the same message it's a beautiful day just to prove you that you know this thing works i have the combination of uppercase and lower cases here and let me so as you can see we are getting this message in an encrypted form right so wherever we have space it's going to be replaced by exclamatory mark and this is something which is not readable by anyone okay so similarly in order to decrypt this it's similar process so let me quickly show you that as well so for decrypting obviously we need the key part so this is the important thing so how decryption works is something like we have decryptor okay so let's give it as decryptor we are going to create something similar to this okay a dictionary Okay, so this is our decryptor and this is going to be dictionary. And then we are going to have zip over here. Instead of passing key and value here, we are going to just reverse it. So it's going to be value over here and key over here. Okay, so this is done. So similar to encryption, decryption performs the same way. So I'll just copy this here and paste it over here. So instead of encrypt message, we'll give here DEC decrypt message. So same thing over here decrypt message and it's going to be same way here instead of message dot lower what's going to happen is we'll have to pass this value so let me quickly run this and show you what it would look like so let's say something like we are passing our card details okay so usually card details it would be like you know nine letters or so so it will be like one two three and then we have space four five six and then some number and then we will also usually pass our name and all right. So it's going to be like, let it be like Edureka. Okay. So, 
and the CVV. CVV is usually three digits, right? So it's three, eight, seven. So now this number is very crucial as well as the first name as well as the CVV because anyone can hack it and try to misuse your account. So now let's see how our encryption and decryption work at the same time. So as you can see here, when I try to encrypt it, so it's in a form of, you know, some numbers which we cannot even comprehend to, you know, to get an output of. So this is how this thing works. And but finally, when I try to decrypt it or when a person has a right key, he can get the same and correct information. So we can check here. So it's one, two, three, four, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and so on and so forth. In order to make this Caesar cipher or encryption algorithm more powerful, what I would do is I would give one more encryption key or encryption algorithm, thus making it more secure. Now what we'll do is we'll try to create a server. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'll create three parties here. One would be the authentic sender and receiver and third party would be an intruder who's trying to spy on these people's network. Okay, so let's see how we can implement that. So first off, let me create our sender here. For in order to send this over the server, we will have to import socket. Okay, so import socket. Okay, and then we have something like we need to get the message, right? So we'll give you a message MSG or let's give a full form ME SSAGE. And we have to ask the end user to give the input. So input, please enter your message. Okay. So now once this is done, we want this thing, this message to be passed through a server, right? So we'll have to create an instance of a socket. So S is equal to socket dot socket. And then within this, we have some variables like socket dot AF underscore in it. And then we also have socket dot socket stream. So it's going to be SOC stream. Perfect. Fine. So now we have to bind it. So you'll take the instance of this. So it's going to be S dot bind. Within this, we're going to pass a tuple. So it, this will have socket dot get host name. Okay. And then we have to provide a port number. So it's going to be three, any number. It's up to you. Okay. So this is done. So we'll have another method over here called as listen and we'll give instance over here as five. Now we'll have a while loop while true. So this is the infinite while loop. So we have something called as s dot accept, right? So this would return us two things address of our port and as well as the object that we need to send, right? So it's going to be like s dot accept. Okay. And now this would return us two things. That's nothing but an object using which we can send a message and the address. Fine, this is perfectly done. And now what we are going to do is we have to send a message, isn't it? So in order to send a message, we'll have something like CLT dot send. Okay, and here is going to be our message. So message, this should remain the same. So we'll not change. But before this, what we'll do is we'll try to encrypt our message. Okay. So in order to encrypt our message, as I mentioned, we have to define our key here. So key is going to be and then we are going to have numbers space with exclamatory mark. So in order to make it more complicated, we can also add some special characters like hash, whatever it is, it's totally up to you. And now we also have to have a value, right? So this would be like VAL and this would be just the reverse of our key. So key will use slicing operation here and this would be done. Now in order to encrypt our message, all we need to do is we need to just exchange these values, right? So we'll have message. Okay. And so for this, I'm going to just use this dot join and then we'll use list comprehension. So this is going to be like dictionary name, right? So what's our dictionary name? So we obviously have to give a dictionary name. So let's give the dictionary name as encryptor. So encryptor over here would be equal to the dictionary, right? So dictionary and we're supposed to have a zip. This zip will have arguments like key, which would be the keys and values over here. Perfect. And now we have to pass an encryptor here. And we need to pass the key values, which would nothing be letters or we can give it as words. So how do I get these words? As I mentioned, it's from for loop for words in message. So this is the message, right? So this is the input message. Okay, dot lower. Perfect. So this is done. 
So now what we're going to do is we'll save this. Before we run, what we'll do is we'll create our receiver and also an hacker. So the code for the receiver and hacker would almost be same, just few differences. So let me quickly go back to my page. Okay, we need something for the receiver end, right? So we'll have import socket, something similar to what we did before. And then we have something like Okay, give the encryption key. Okay, so we'll try to perform two layers of security here. What we'll do is if the person gives the correct encryption key size, only then he will be prompted for next step to give the encryption key, right? So we'll have two layers of security. So first off, we'll have encryption key, right? E N C or we can give it as decryption, right? D E C key. Okay, so first layer, what we're gonna do is if decryption key dot length or it's gonna be here. If it is equal to number of alphabets, okay, that's going to be 26, right? So we have 26 alphabets. So apart from 26, we also have numbers, right? So we have how many numbers did we have? Let me quickly show you that. So here we have 26 alphabets, then we have numbers that is 10 that is from 1 to 0. And then we have three special characters with a space. So it's going to be 26 plus 10 that is going to be 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So it's gonna be 40, right? So, so this is gonna be 40. I hope you understand why we got 40, right? So if the length is same, only then you go on, okay? So now we, I need a decryption key. Fine. Okay, so now if the length is same, let's just receive a message, okay? So it's gonna be like socket. We need to create an object of a socket. So before that, we need to import it. So yeah, we have imported our socket over here. So let's create an instance of a socket. S is equal to socket dot socket. And then we'll pass some arguments. So it's going to be socket dot AF. Then we have socket dot socket stream. Okay. And similar to earlier, we have connect method here as well as dot connect, wherein we are going to pass the tuple. So it's going to be socket dot get host name and mind it we're going to fill this port number later the port number should be same as what we had before okay so we'll just give a random something like this here as of now and we'll change it later so whatever message you have received it's going to be like message whatever message you receive is s, s dot receive and then we are going to pass number of bytes so you can just give any random value so i'll give here as thousand it's totally up to you and then as the message is decrypted, you have to obviously decode our message, right? So it's going to be message. This will be message dot decode. And obviously it's going to be UTF-8. Okay, so now we have the message. Let's try to put our decryption algorithm here, So which is pretty simple. It's something similar to what we did. We need the value, right? So VAL is going to be key we need all the values of our decryption key minus one. Okay, so it's gonna be decryption key here, DEC underscore key. So now we have the dictionary, right? So now we have to convert our message back to whatever it was. So we'll, we'll just give it as message or before that we have to create our dictionary, right? So we'll give it as decryptor, D-E-C-R-I-P-T-E-R. -E -E so decryptor is nothing but dictionary, which is nothing but Obviously, the values will be here first because we are receiving the values and then the keys. So it's going to be decrypt key. Fine. I hope you all understand till here. And now, finally, what we are going to do is convert our message back to what it was. So message. Then, then I have join. Then we are going to just use list comprehension. So whatever is the name of our dictionary here. Decryptor. And then we obviously have to pass letters or words. And the way we get this words is from for loop for words in whatever the message we have received, right? So it's going to be here. Hope you understand this. And now, once we have our decrypted message, what we'll do is we'll just print our message. Fine. And now, before that, 
So if this fellow doesn't give the correct key input, so we'll just say here else print you're not authorized for this information. So now we have our algorithm ready here. Before that, let's quickly fix this. So let me go back to our server one. Okay, so here, as you can see, we have two changes. We have to copy this part and we obviously have to encrypt our message before sending. Okay, so before this, we have to encrypt this into form of bytes, which will be encrypted in the form of bytes, right? And then we have to message which algorithm I'm using here. So it's going to be UTF hyphen eight. Perfect. So let me quickly jump here. Okay, and let me pass this value here as well. Because this host name should be same, right? Okay, so let me now quickly run this and show you how it would look like. But before that, let's copy our encryption key. Okay, and then another small change I would do is just give some space, you know. Fine. So now let me run this and show you. First, let me run our server one. Okay. Yeah, so here let's give something like hi. I'm sending you my ID number and we'll give some random number. Let it be like 67, 69, 21 and something like that. Okay. And just give some characters as well. Okay. So let's hit enter. So now it is expecting that, you know, we run our client code. So let me quickly fetch that one now. And yeah, here we have our client. And we'll enter our presentation mode here. Okay, and let me run our client, right? So here I'll click for run and then we'll have client over here. This is asking me to give an encryption key. First, let's do one thing. Let's give some random encryption key. So let's give something like this, some random number that I'm generating over here. And let's have some special characters. So here it says you're not authorized for that information. So let's now run this again and give the correct encryption key, right? So let's run this here. And as I've copied this earlier, so let me just give this part and we should get our message. Hi, I'm sending you my ID and this is so and so forth is my ID. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll create a hacker over here. So everything remains the same. All the mechanism that we have used for our client receiver, everything remains the same. Only part we won't be having is this option for encryption key it would just be like receiving a message, right? Because hacker will have access to this port number. So let me now quickly move to page empty sheet and let me copy all of this. And now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go for hacker here and let me enter our presentation mode. Okay. So let me paste our code over here. Fine. And let me quickly erase a couple of things. Fine. And then None of these would exist, right? So we won't have any of this, but the message exists because we are receiving the message and even the if statement won't be there. Fine. So let me kind of remove this as well. Okay. Let's fix our indentation issue over here. Fine. This is perfect. So now let's run our code. Like if you're wondering why we don't asking the input key and all see, only if a person is authorized to a system, he'll be having all the features of a security system. But if I'm a third party or an hacker, I would have bypassed all of those security systems, right? So only thing that is standing in my way is this port number, which is easily accessible most of the time. It is accessible most of the time when you use this public Wi-Fi, right? So let's now see how this guy would receive a code. Okay, so let's run our code here. And let's go for our hacker. Okay, so let me rerun this. Let's see where we are going wrong. Okay, let's see if our encrypted message is working fine over here. So let me just print my encrypted message. Fine. And let me rerun our server. Okay, so I'll have something like hello. My bank details are. So let me give something that resembles a bank account number. Okay. And let's see if this works. Okay. 
Okay, the issue that we are having over here is because we are supposed to encrypt our message before this while true, right? Okay, so let me quickly get that fixed. So all we are supposed to do is just have this over here, cut this part and paste it over here. Fine, I hope this looks fine. So let me fix this indentation part. Okay, so let me rerun our server again. So let me give some basic simple words here. Hi, I am your friend. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so you can see here it's working now, right? So let me quickly rerun this and put some value that would resemble real life scenario. So let's have something like I am sending you my account details. Okay. So now this looks cool. So now what we'll do is we'll try to run our code here again once again. So we have run server. Let's see if our message is getting encrypted. So my account details. Some random number that I'm giving here. Fine. Okay, so it's getting encrypted. Okay, so now let's run this once on our application that is one's on our receiver another one's on our the hacker okay, right so okay so we have our client here so let's see what happens client one and we'll run our client one so it's asking me to give an encryption key let's copy our encryption key here close this and rerun our client fine so it's asking me to give an encryption key should be something like this and I would hit enter. So I'm getting a correct value. So let me rerun this once again, giving a wrong encryption key. Okay, so let me rerun this here and let me give hello. I need info. So it would say you're not authorized for this pretty much simple, right? So now we'll do the same for how our hacker would have our message, right? So let's see how this would look like. Okay, so I would run this now. I would run our hacker. So hacker is over here. So hacker would get an encrypted message. I hope you got a brief idea about how to design a cybersecurity system, right? Specifically cryptography. All right, guys, with this, we have come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Until next time, goodbye and take care.